Hello. Hi. I've got a question that's probably on a lot of people's minds. Can you really grow potatoes out of your own shit? Yes, you can. Potatoes are driven by their DNA just like anything else. Shit provides all the nutrients it needs, part of the great circle of life. What about soil? Would that impact the produce at all? Yeah, it would, because in the book, he grows potatoes in Martian soil, which turns out to have a lot of perchlorates in it. Perchlorates are kind of toxic to people, but in his desperate situation, it wouldn't be that bad. It'd be kind of like smoking. It's bad for you, you shouldn't do it, it's not a good idea, but, you know, his alternative is starving, so. Let's talk about Mars, something close to my heart. And mine. You know, for me, 30 Seconds to Mars was always about the future. It was always about how close we are to some of the things that we dream about. When do you think we'll actually get to Mars? And why go? I'll start with why go. It's not very likely, but there could be some sort of cataclysm that wipes us all out. It could be an asteroid, it could be a war, it could be a disease. Who knows? When we have a self-sustaining human population somewhere other than Earth, that becomes virtually impossible to wipe out humanity. And by the way, a permanent population on Mars would not just be a bunch of humans running around the sterile, you know, steel caves. It would be an entire transplanted biosphere of Earth. So we would have all the life forms of Earth kind of backed up on Mars. When do I think we'll first set foot on Mars? NASA says they can do it around 2035. I'm guessing it's closer to 2050. I don't doubt that NASA could get it done by 2035, but I don't trust Congress to give them as much money as they need to make that happen. I think the first manned mission to Mars won't be just like the Apollo program, and it won't be like it's depicted in my book. I think it'll be a large international effort, and uh, I would hope that we would also start cooperating with China. So I think it'll be a global mission to Mars, and I think that'll be pretty cool. Should we go to Mars before we learn how to take care of our own planet? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, you don't solve all of humanity's problems serially. Our desire to wander away and grow and expand and cover all available territory fundamentally comes down to our desire to see what's beyond the horizon. And it's the reason that we're still alive today. Is there life on Mars? I think that Mars is completely sterile, doesn't have life, and has never had life. And that the only life on Mars are bacteria that have hitched rides on Earth probes. The reason I believe that is because life is incredibly tenacious and prevalent. And if there is life on a planet, and a few billion years for it to evolve, it'll get everywhere. A chunk of space this big. From anywhere on Earth, you could grab it from the ocean, you could grab it out of the air, you could grab it from the Sahara Desert or from Antarctica, and you would find it teeming with life. It would be absolutely riddled with life. And on Mars, all the probes we've sent have found absolutely nothing. So I just don't believe that it ever had life because I think if it did, the life would be all over the place. Do you think we'll find life on other planets? Uh, I think we will eventually, but it could be literally millions of years from now. I also don't believe we'll ever find a way to travel faster than light, despite what science fiction tells you. So that means the only way for us to ever run into life is to eventually slowly expand out in our galaxy until we happen to run into that rarest of gems, which is a planet that naturally evolved life on its own. Do you think there is life? It is difficult for the human mind to comprehend the sheer number of stars there are. So whatever the odds are against life happening on a planet, when you multiply that by the total number of stars that are in the universe, you're gonna end up with lots and lots of life worlds out there. Technology, how do you think that's going to define the future for us? Anybody should ask themselves this, would you rather live now or in any previous century? And most people would answer now once they start realizing all the technology they'd have to do without. Go back to the 20th century even and you've got pretty much no internet. 
Go back to the 19th century, you have no vaccinations. Go back to the 18th century and you can barely even survive a trip across the ocean. So I think technology just constantly improves the quality of life of humans. It also improves the quality of weaponry, so it you know, comes with its downsides. But overall, I think technology just keeps moving us further and further into a higher quality of life. What keeps you up at night? Insomnia mostly, I've never had a good time sleeping. Um, I am worried about, as we develop more and more technology, at what point will we develop the technology for a smaller and smaller group of dedicated people to kill large numbers of people. So like right now, if I said like, huh, I wanna make a nuke, I can't do that myself. Even if I have the knowledge, I don't have the technology necessary. But as new technologies grow, they can be misapplied. And then maybe eventually it'll only take a thousand dedicated people and some clever hiding of resources to figure out how to make a nuclear weapon. Then maybe it goes down to a hundred. If a hundred people could make a nuclear weapon, we wouldn't have cities anymore. I was talking with a friend of mine a few weeks ago and he was telling me how oh, it's not necessarily the answer, uh, it's the question that's important. What's the right question to ask? I believe that the best question to ask is, what is the safest and most effective way to reach post-scarcity? Post-scarcity is a point that I optimistically think will happen eventually in our future, where our technology level gets to the point where there is no longer scarcity of anything, where we have the ability to say, you want food? You know, push a button, food shows up. So think about it this way. We don't have wars over oxygen. Everybody has access to it. Everybody has as much as they need. If all of the resources that humans need were as easily available as oxygen, we wouldn't have anything to fight about at all. So the question is, what do we do to get from where we are now to a world where there's no scarcity of any resource at all? And I honestly believe that technology will solve that problem, not in our lifetime, but it'll happen eventually. And that'll be like a new age of man. So what's your guess? Do you think we're going to become an interplanetary species? Are we going to colonize other worlds? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're definitely going to become an interplanetary species, and I think the first planet we're going to colonize is Mars. You called it. <laughs> we'll see if I'm right.